situation, particularly in Britain, and underlined the point that the British economy is, if anything, more exposed to the financial crisis sweeping across the world than any other comparable economy. We talked about the fact that the British economy, because of years of mismanagement by Gordon Brown and Tony Blair, both economic mismanagement through the building up of a huge budget deficit and political mismanagement through the breaking up of all the regulatory measures that used to keep these processes in some sort of check, meant that the British economy would suffer enormous problems as a result of the crisis worsening. Now, George Soros, the American financial guru, has reiterated this week that this is the most serious crisis in our lifetime. And we have to be slightly careful, given the events of the last seven days, not to underestimate now the speed with which the financial infection can immerse itself throughout the whole world economy. To just take one example, the collapse of XL Airlines, as one of its consequences, has ruined one of Iceland's main banks because Iceland had bought into Excel and now owns a number of pieces of paper which are utterly worthless. This crisis is like a virus mutating across countries and continents and is now affecting every corner of the world. Just 12 months ago, the capitalist class believed that the good times would last forever. Now, the very same people who held free market liberal globalization as the greatest uh, accomplishment of humankind are looking to blame each other and to say that the politicians were, not to, were to blame for not regulating, the speculators are to blame for short selling on the stock market. The truth of the matter is capitalism is behaving as capitalism always behaves. And it's correct to say that we're not in a 1929 style situation as far as the real economy is concerned. Then production fell by 40%. But in relation to the financial markets, Mike Love has a point. There, there is really no template that we can use to accurately compare what has gone before to what is happening now. There were five giants in the American investment banking sector 12 months ago. It would have been undreamed of to imagine that one of them could have gone under. The Bear Stearns crash, the Lehman Brothers crash, now Merrill Lynch has been taken over. Morgan Stanley is toppling. Morgan Stanley could be gone by tomorrow. That would leave Goldman Sachs a gold-coated American investment bank. But the problem is, the markets do not know where the bad debts lie. The bankers cannot come out and honestly say, we are carrying this amount of subprime debt on our balance sheets. And it's not only the subprime debt. The crisis began in the subprime housing market in the US. But the whole concept of derivatives, the whole concept of leveraging the economy, of borrowing and borrowing, using dodgy bits of paper with which to borrow, means that nobody in the world knows where the debt now lies. And in fact, The Economist this week, in typical understatement, said it does not help that financial products are now so complex that it is very hard to make even an educated guess about the real value of a bank. Now one of the reasons the dollar has not collapsed in the last few days is because there is now a concerted world effort to try and maintain some sort of financial stability in America given the importance of America's role in the world economy. But America does not have inexhaustible pockets. Tom made the point that the Fed has now taken on board many, many extra commitments which mean that there will be limits even in the US 
to the degree to which the Fed can continue to rescue ailing capitalist firms. And the reality is, and the most important point is for us, that this crisis will be paid for ultimately by the working class. By the working class in America, by the working class in Britain, and in particular, by the working class in the neo-colonial world. And there was talk a year ago about the effects of the decoupling of the world economy. Hope was installed that somehow China and India could rescue the Western economies. They would act as the new locomotive that would drag the Western economies out of recession. We said at the time, that was a nonsense. China is dependent on the world market like every other country. China is dependent particularly on the American and the European markets for its exports. In this period, exports to the West have begun to significantly fall. And therefore, just as there was not a decoupling when the process of economic growth was taking place, so too there is much evidence to suggest there will not be a decoupling in this period. On the contrary, the stock exchange in Shanghai has fallen in the last period. The stock exchange in Mumbai has fallen in the last period. And that will be the pattern because what has happened is the infection has left Wall Street and has gone into Main Street. In Britain, on Bedminster Parade, shopkeepers are saying no one is coming into our shops. No one is buying goods. And unemployment has only just begun to raise. Now, David Blanchflower, who sits on the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England, has long warned that unemployment will hit 2 million by Christmas. That is almost, we could say in the light of the last uh, few days, an underestimate. We will see 40,000 job losses as a result of the merger between Lloyds and HBOS. The Evening Post made the point last night, the city of Bristol will be hit harder than any other city outside of London because of the concentration of financial jobs in the city of Bristol. And one of the things we should do next week with our material is go down to the Lloyds building um, at the At Bristol uh, uh, setup and leaflet the workers going into work, many of whom will not be going into work very much longer when HBOS closes its doors in the course of the next period. There is an estimate that between 30 and 40% of all the estate agents in Britain will close their doors in the next six months. It is going to be impossible to sell a house and realise the kind of price that you were expecting to get. The aggregate value of house prices in Britain is falling by £1 billion pounds okay. every single day. And that illustrates the depth of this particular crisis. Now another financier, Warren Buffet, who famously uh, bet against the um, Bank of England along with George Soros in the early 1990s, has long contended that the subprime market and the derivative market were what he called financial weapons of mass destruction. He pointed out that the capitalists were like lemmings rushing towards the cliff edge unaware that what they were sowing into the fabric of their economy were bombs that would explode and not only take their legs off, but actually take off the legs of the system if that wasn't um, sorted out and checked. And meanwhile, people in this country, for the last 15 to 20 years, have not participated in the so-called boom. The boom has passed the working class by. We work longer hours than we did 15 years ago. Relative to the rich in this country, workers have lower levels of wages than they did 15 years ago. Public services have been sold off and privatized and conditions have become brutalized for workers in those public services. And therefore, there is no sense in which workers will cry tears when they see these big multinationals and big banks closing their doors. Of course, we have sympathy for the, older, the ordinary workers who work in those banks, but they are the minority. Just last year, over £13 billion was gorged upon in Christmas bonuses 
by these creatures who inhabited the city of London. But of course, as the champagne corks stop popping, as these people learn to drink lager like the rest of us, so they will understand the realities in 21st century Britain.